Um, we are so, so delighted uh, to be launching this exhibition here today at Ilan West Cork Art Centre. The exhibition is called The Allegory of the MV Alta and it's by Magella O'Neill Collins. <laughs> to work with Madge for the past three years and seeing how this body of work has developed in that time. Um, it's been a long journey, it's been a hard struggle, but I think that we all agree the result of that three years of intense work has been this absolutely wonderful body of work, this absolutely beautiful exhibition. Um, and I want to congratulate you, Madge, for a really, really yeah. stunning um, I just want to um, thank uh, the staff here and at the West Cork Arts Centre for um, all the work that they've done in this exhibition and also the board of the West Cork Arts Centre. I'd also like to thank our funders, the Arts Council of Ireland and Cork County Council. And um, I, Madge has said that she's not going to say thank yous because she wouldn't know where to start and if she started naming people, um, then she's bound to leave people out. But the, there's been so many people that have worked with her and have supported her and been on this journey with her and she just wants to to say thank you to everybody um, and uh, that uh, she really appreciates all your support and your your um, help over the past number of years. So um, I'm going to hand over now to Flora McCarthy. Uh, we're delighted that Flor has come down from Dublin to um, officially launch the exhibition for us here this evening. Home from Dublin. Home from Dublin, <laughs> yes. Flor, of course, is a Skibreen native, um, was in school with Madge, um, knows Madge in an awful long time, uh, a journalist, and um, we're just thrilled that she's going to do the, the honours for us today. So, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anna, but unlike you, I need my notes. <laughs> um, also, I'm quoting Mad quite a bit uh, in my few words, so um, uh, you'll excuse the little bits of paper. Um, just to say thanks again um, for the lovely introduction and uh, parts of it were even true. Um, it is truly wonderful to see so many of you here. I've been at a lot of these exhibition openings here in Skib and um, over the years, and I've never seen such a, a, a room of people that's so enthusiastic about the work, and it's no wonder. Um, I'd like to just say a special hello to Mad um, and her, her family, to um, Mary and John, to um, Michael, to Mikey and to Fiona. And for, some of you have travelled to be here on this uh, such a special occasion from Poland, uh, from London, Dunleary, Kinsale, Cork, Lachine, and of course from Baltimore and Sherkin. Baltimore and Sherkin. Lots of you. Um, so when Anne and Magella, Mad, invited me to, we'll start off formally, um, invited me to join uh, in today's celebrations, I didn't hesitate for one second. And it wasn't because it was an excuse to be here on this special day or to come home from um, to West Cork, which I do as much as I can. It's not because I was in school with, with Matt and we go back a long way. I didn't hesitate because to be involved or associated in any way at all with this extraordinary exhibition is uh, an incredible honour and an absolute thrill. The world has been waiting for three years to see these works and I'm sure you'll agree they are well worth the wait. I think each one of you gets an opportunity afterwards or else you have to come back to have a good wander around when maybe it's a little bit quieter. Um, to take in these exceptionally beautiful paintings, each one is deserving of time. 
Each painting stands alone and collectively they tell the story of the MV Alta, the allegory of the MV Alta, as Matt has uh, titled it. It's a story that gripped uh, Medela O'Neill Collins and inspired her to create this superb allegory in paint. Briefly, the story, in case you, you haven't come across it, is the extraordinary journey of a mysterious merchant vessel which was abandoned at sea 1400 uh, miles southeast of Bermuda in October 2018 um, after she suffered engine failure. It's a modern day ghost ship. How could you not be inspired by that? The Alta had been en route from Greece to Haiti, but ended up drifting for 496 days uh, over a distance of 2,300 nautical miles before running aground on the Cork coastline at Ballyandrine Bay, close to Ballycotton. Uh, as Mad says, she came to us. Um, but we're left to guess what this journey was like. The, the vessel's exact position and distance travelled during all that time is totally unknown and unrecorded. Despite exhaustive inquiries by the Irish authorities, the MV Alta's owners have never been found and are at this stage very unlikely to be. The MV Alta, unclaimed, unsalvaged, is slowly being broken apart um, under the cliffs through the action of the wind and waves. So the MV Alta, or the Alta, as we affectionately know her from now on, came to our shores and captured the imagination and I believe the heart of one of our best known and best visual artists, Magella O'Neill Collins. There of course, there is absolutely no need to introduce Magella, but for the record, <coughs> she's a painter who lives and works on the island of Shirkin, just off the west Cork coast by Baltimore and by Turkhead and by uh, yeah, all the other peers. Her work relates directly to her experience of living on an island surrounded by water and defined by the ever-changing weather and light. Magella makes paintings which try to make sense of what it means to live in this remote, rural and beautiful part of the world. Her approach is based on intuition and experimentation where painting is a means of reshaping our experience of the world, of examining, formalizing, and giving shape to her perceptions. So that's the official bio. <laughs> <laughs> then there's Magella. <laughs> Mad. Still a world-class artist that we're all so proud of, but is also the most incredibly warm and wonderful and creative and generous daughter, mother, wife, neighbour, teacher, and friend. I'll be back to that. I will come back to that bit at the end. Uh, and so the work began. Watching the story of the Envialta on the TV news, in the papers, Madge found herself setting to work, first researching everything she could get her hands on, <coughs> photographs, the ship's construction details, and she did some detective work and even accessed plans, <laughs> determined to try and find any trace of what this vessel had been through, what was her journey in life. Alta was taking on a meaning for Madge, much more than a shipwreck now. Alta was becoming an allegory with purpose, with a narrative that mirrored in many ways the course of life, of her life, of women's <coughs> lives. Madge said herself, living near the ocean and with the wreck coming ashore so close to home, the story resonated profoundly with me, like so many things in life, you never know what will wash up on your shore. I think she was sent to us for a reason. It started with the drawings. I was fascinated to learn that she made a conscious decision not to visit the wreck in person. And I found this really surprising because I presumed you know, for an artist, the very first thing you do is you try and get to see what it is that you're painting. But this was a conscious decision, and she still hasn't been. She needed to paint these paintings without being influenced by being there, looking at the wreck. She needed to explore Alta, 
and her meaning from her own corner of the world, her studio by the water's edge. And it worked. Anyway, she couldn't after while COVID had hit, while Matt was working, and suddenly none of us could travel anywhere. We were all in lockdown. The freedom which Alta experienced on her mysterious drift across the Atlantic took on an even greater meaning the more we were trapped, unable to travel. Matt says, I thought as if I was on a boat going through life. How one day you're sailing along and think everything is grand, then suddenly life throws things at us. You find yourself in uncharted waters, and then in a blink of an eye, you hit a rock. Alta was now becoming more and more important as an allegory. But she's more than an allegory. At times, when you look at the paintings, you'll see Alta is personified in paint. Madge says this happens so much that she now feels protective of her. A ship whose name has changed 14 times in her life. Um, she was designed as a coastal vessel, was never intended to cross, cross oceans. Yet that's what became of her. Maybe I'll ditch this, will I? Um, Madge has even said to me last night that she wants to scoop her up and take her home. She was so abused, abandoned, she was pirated and invaded. The engine room was set on fire, there were attempts to salvage her. She was stripped of all possible ownership details while identifying marks before finally being abandoned by her crew and setting off on her journey. Alta is a reminder to Madge of how easily things can be disposed of and how easily life can take unexpected turns. She found herself thinking a lot about Alta and as the work progressed, even began to dream of Alta. Drifting in the doldrums, around in circles, encountering fierce Atlantic storms or tranquil mornings. Incredible also that in this day and age, a vessel can be lost, drift for two years in the Atlantic. So it's a busy shipping um, route. And with all our tech, with AI, the ocean is still a vast place. How could a ship this size just disappear and then reappear? So Mads began to think about climate change too. How little regard for this vessel, where and how she might end up. A mass of cork and steel. What if she'd carried a cargo of chemicals, for example? But the greatest influence I think that Alta has had on Mad and on her work is that she serves as a reminder that we're all on our own course, that there's very little control we have over that, and we all will hit a rock metaphorically one day. Hopefully it's just metaphorically. Um, Alta is a reminder of the course of our own lives, of our own bodies, and how they change the knocks we get, the scars that they leave. Alta as a woman, she is sculptural, she's strong, she's very beautiful. Mad says, as we age, Alta is a reminder, you can still be beautiful. Our bodies take a lot of knocks, she was dragged and smashed in all directions, but she still holds her dignity. And we see that in these works. I love how, as this project over three years was progressing, the, the art began to really change and be affected by Alta, a profound effect on her art. As she was painting over time, the representative ship became less and less visible. Matt says, visualizing her day and night, like she was free in my imagination, and it seemed to free up my painting. It changed everything, the colors, the shapes, the forms, even the horizon disappeared. Those of you who are very familiar with Madge's work would know that there is often a horizon. Um, that's gone. Uh, I found it fascinating also that there are no individual titles on these paintings and no frames. She said to me, I didn't want to trap her in a frame. Actually, your real words were, it would have killed me to put her in a box. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, mad. it was the Alta's freedom that most inspired Madge. Um, everything became more abstract in her paint. The colours became more beautiful. And you said to me, as you thought about 
how she was changing and how we change in time. You were brought back to your childhood. I love this image. And the colours of childhood, the ice creams of childhood. Uh, colour, you can make strong, serious statements with colour, but there's a lightness too, a lighter side. I was thinking of raspberry ripple. Neapolitan, always double. <coughs> and so this story, this allegory goes beyond art. Although an islander now, it used to take a scorcher of a day to lure this one into the sea for a swim. But as she worked on the paintings, Madge felt an urge to experience the sea, to become immersed in the ocean as Alta was and is. And now, along with Mona, her fellow islander artist and friend, Madge swims every day where the rocks meet her garden at the dock in Shirkham. See you there in June. <laughs> so Madge, I've done a little research on Alta myself. Alta, alto, altus in Latin means a high place or elevated. And this rusty wreck, sorry for calling it that, has been elevated here, providing us with this exceptionally beautiful art, but also challenging us to think. In Indian tradition, Alta is the red dye that type of henna that's applied to the hands and feet of women during special occasions. It symbolizes beauty and feminine power. And best of all, alta mare in Italian, the time at which the tide is at the highest point. And I know that's the time when you and Mona are in the sea. Before we finish, and I'm sorry for going on and on, I did mention, I'd come back to the friends bit, don't kill me for this. About 15 years ago, Maturkin was really building a reputation um, as an island of exceptional creative talent. Bava was up and running um, with Matt and Burns and Anne and others. Um, I did a report for RT Nationwide on this amazing story. So I'd spent all my childhood summers in Maturkin and Christmas and Easter's. Um, and it was an island where in the past for education after the age of 12, you needed to leave, you needed to go to the mainland. And suddenly, you could come to Shirkin to do third level fine art degree. That, that is a, an internationally amazing story. Um, so you had people traveling to Shirkin to do this. For a professional artist of such immense talent, Madge has made choices. She could be a superstar of the art world internationally, making headlines, now I know she has, and a mint in London or New York, but I think she's made the right choice to live where she does, at the best end of the road in the world, the waves lap in her studio, swimming from her garden. She can send her art away, but she doesn't have to go. Anyway, so, a few years ago, following on from the Nationwide Report, I happen to be thinking about doing another, maybe a story for the examiner. And Vincy and Rosalind set up the Shirkin Ferry, uh, an island hopping tour. If you can do it in Greece, why not in West Cork? So I thought, I might do a story on this. Um, out from the Sound, Baltimore, Hare Island, Skeens, Horse, and Shirkin. I hopped on board. A most perfect summer's morning. Sunny and still. <laughs> I'm like now. But you know those mornings when the sound carries across the sea? I can often in Baltimore hear conversations in Chirk and look out at Johnson's and stuff. Um, there was a high tide that morning, which meant the ferry could go very close to the shore. Inside those reefs just in front of Madge's studio. There was Rosalind telling visitors on the mic, um, the day trippers. Now, if you look over the starboard side, you'll see the studio of a famous artist. This is also the home of Nadella O'Neill Collins, right on cue with her hair in a towel after her shower. <laughs> Who emerges with a cuppa out onto her deck? The sound carried all right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> In a way, this has come full circle for us too. When we left school, um, Madge went off to Limerick to uh, Art College, where Anne was, 
um, to study painting and how to do it. I ran off to um, Dublin to study history of art, so she makes it, I just talk about it. <laughs> but here we are. Um, so congratulations, Matt, and thank you for this wonderful work. Thank you, Anne, for making this exhibition happen, and all at Ellen, for giving its shape in this spectacular space. A special thank to Madge's late beautiful friend, Breed Collins, who believed in her from the start and was there through the thick and thin, and to John Hegarty for always being there to help. Thanks to Ben Lochran for the brilliant essay um, on the works, and thank to, thanks to you all for joining us to celebrate this art and this woman, especially Madge's many friends and family. And thank you, Alta, for rocking on on the coast of County Cork. Finally, this is a body of work to be marvelled at. I hope you can all, as I said, come back at a quieter time to soak up these paintings as I wandered in here earlier by myself. The brilliant lay of the land which gives each painting space felt standing right here as if this was a place of water. The paintings seem to be floating. The viewer seems to be floating. I got this impression that if you tilted the gallery ever so slightly, the sea would flow. <laughs> Congratulations, Matt. <laughs>